Sky Watchers, and welcome to the sky above us. I'm James Albury, and I'm your tour guide to the night sky. If the title of this episode sounds familiar, it is. It's not that I'm lazy and couldn't come up with an interesting title. It just so happens that this month we have another close pairing of the moon and Mars. Plus, we have the return of a favorite springtime meteor shower. What am I talking about? Let me show you. Okay, we have our sky set up for 6 a.m. on April 6th facing southeast. The planets Jupiter and Saturn will be visible just above the waning crescent moon about an hour before sunrise. On the morning of April 6th, Saturn and the moon will be just over 4 degrees apart. As you may remember in our last episode, astronomers measure angular distances in the sky by degrees, minutes, and seconds. The moon is half a degree in width, so the moon and Saturn will be eight full moon widths apart on the morning of April 6th. On the following morning, April 7th, the moon trades celestial dance partners and cozies up with the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. Jupiter and the moon will appear just over four and a half degrees, or nine full moon widths apart. You're probably saying to yourself, Self, didn't we just see this happen last month? Well, in one case you're right. The moon and the planets did have a pairing last month. The trick is, each month is a little different. It takes the moon approximately 29 days to make one complete orbit of Earth. Since it follows a similar path through the sky as the planets, it will pass each planet once per month. The thing that makes each passage different is the inclination of the moon's orbit. From our perspective, the moon's orbit is tilted, or inclined, by about 5 degrees with respect to our own orbit around the sun. This slight tilt is one of the reasons why we don't see eclipses every month. It just so happens that each planet has an orbit that is also inclined at different angles with respect to our orbit. Therefore, as the moon and the planets travel through the sky, they can appear to pass much closer to each other one time around, but be nowhere close to each other on a subsequent passage. That brings us to our situation with Mars. Let me show you. Okay, we have our skies set to the evening of April 16th at 8.30 p.m. facing west. High in the sky, you'll see the waxing crescent moon nestled between the horns of Taurus the Bull. The red planet Mars will be just above the moon and between the stars Elneth and Tianguan, the stars that mark the tips of Taurus's horns. From the United States, this pairing of Mars and the moon won't be very spectacular. But if you happen to have friends who live in Southeast Asia, specifically India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, or Northern Singapore, tell them to check out the moon and Mars on the night of April 17th. Because early that evening, not only will the moon appear very close to Mars, it will actually occult Mars. An occultation is like an eclipse, but of a star or a planet by the moon. Such events are particularly rare, especially where it involves a planet or a bright star. Furthermore, you have to be in the right place at the right time to see one. The last time Mars was occulted by the moon was in September 2020, and it was viewable in Brazil. During that occultation, sky watchers in North America only saw the moon pass near Mars, not in front of it. Lastly, we have the Lyrid meteor shower. Every April, Earth crosses the orbit of Comet Thatcher. When this comet passes the sun, it leaves a trail of dust and small rocks that we fly through every spring. When these particles hit our upper atmosphere, they're traveling at such high speeds that they burn up in our atmosphere and they cause the air around them to glow. This streak of light is called a meteor. The small rocks and dust that produce the meteor are called meteoroids. We named this meteor shower after the constellation Lyra the Harp because the meteors appear to be radiating from that constellation. We call that point the radiant point of the meteor shower, and it's a visual effect caused by the direction Earth is traveling through space at the time of the meteor shower. The lyrids are active between April 16th and April 25th. The peak of the shower is on April 22nd, and the best time to view them is any time between midnight and sunrise. The best display of lyrid meteors will happen in the hours just before sunrise when Lyra is at its highest in the sky. The problem with this year's lyrids is that the moon will be in its waning gibbous phase, so we have to wait until the moon sets before we can see some of the fainter meteors. Therefore, this year's lyrids may only produce 15 to 20 meteors per hour at its best. 
As they say, some meteors are better than no meteors. Okay, no one says that, only I say that. Anywho, if you've never seen a meteor shower before, this will be a good opportunity to test out your meteor watching skills. So, here are a few things you can do to enjoy the Lyrids. Number one, find a dark location with a clear sky. Your backyard should be sufficient, but if you want to maximize the number you can see, find a place where you can safely view the shower away from city lights. Number two, take a lawn chair and a blanket with you. Having a lawn chair will allow you to lay back and view the entire sky. The blanket will help keep you warm if it's chilly where you live. Although it's April, it still can be cold outside in the early morning hours. Number three, scan the sky back and forth. The meteors won't all appear near Lyra, but they will radiate from Lyra. Some may appear in a completely different part of the sky. But by scanning back and forth, you're more likely to see at least one. Number four, make your wish list early. People often like to make wishes on meteors. Well, some meteors are really fast, so by the time you see them, they're gone before you can get your wish ready. So, have your wishes in mind. And lastly, number five, be patient. Meteors tend to appear in bursts. Sometimes you'll see two or three within a few minutes of each other. Other times you'll go a full 10 minutes or more without seeing anything. Remember, patience is a virtue, and meteor showers definitely help you develop patience. All right, my friends, get outside and watch for the moon to visit Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars, and also see if you can spot the Lyrids this month. Before you go, make sure you click on the subscribe button below. The Lyrid Meteor Shower will be happy you did. And if you'd like to support our program, click on the Patreon link in the description, and you could qualify for Autograph the Sky Above Us memorabilia, and you could see your name in the credits of our next episode. The April sky is an exciting thing to see, especially if you remember to keep looking up. Music